This is the Mercedes C63 AMG Coupe. Now, normally I review press cars. However, this one actually belongs to the founder and CEO of CarWow, Mr. James Hind. Now, there's a picture of James, all happy with his new car. Now, James has only just bought this car, so I've pledged on pain of death to take great care of his new baby. <laughs> I've promised that I won't drive it very quickly at all. <laughs> And of course, I've told him that I'll treat his car with the same respect I would my own car. And with that in mind, here is the most sedate review of an AMG Coupe you're ever going to see. This is the range topping edition one version of the C63 AMG Coupe. That means as well as the usual AMG beefed up bodywork frippery and sporty cabin features, it has an extra inch on its rear wheels, some gloss black detailing and a huge stripe running the length of the car, like some giant German skunk. And this car goes like stink. So under the bonnet, I've got a four litre twin turbo V8 and as this is the S model, it's got 510 horsepower. It drives the rear wheels via a very slick seven-speed automatic gearbox with paddle shifters and a limited slip differential for really good traction. And all that means you should be able to do 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 3.9 seconds if you use launch control. However, for each car I test, I first need to learn the procedure, and it's easier in some cars than in others. To find out how the C63 fares, I'm going to have a race against a human. A human that, unlike the car, is built for comfort rather than speed. So what's going to happen is when the star starts the race, the runner's going to go and I'm going to pick up the manual. I'm going to figure out how to engage launch control. I'm going to engage it and then I'm going to launch and I'm going to race the runner and see if I can beat them to that cone. So let's see what happens. Right, here we go, get the manual. I know in this car, launch is called race start. So where is it in the index? Come on, come on. Okay, put the car into sports mode, sports mode's engaged. Put it into drive. It's left foot on the brake, it's on the brake. Pull both paddles up together. The right paddle to confirm, yes, I do want to race start. Floor the throttle, put the manual down and go! Come on, car, come on! Gonna catch him! Oh, it's slippery! There he is! There he is! Can I pass him? Can I? <laughs> Blubbing it, that was close. Fortunately, the car managed to beat the human. Actually, once you've learned the launch control system, it's dead quick to engage so long as the car is in anything other than comfort mode. As for the time, let's see. took 4.6 seconds. Not too bad considering the track is slippery and the C63 has a tendency to light up its rear tyres. So this engine produces 700 newton metres of torque and to put that into perspective for you, that's more pulling power than you get from a Ferrari F12 and the best thing is is that it's available from under 2000 rpm so you put your foot down and this thing <laughs> it just takes off and it makes the sound of an old fucker. I'm talking about the, the World War II airplane. They sound like that. <laughs> if you turn the C63's electronic stability control off, the car turns into an absolute hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, James won't mind me returning his car with a little less rubber on its tyres. For me, the true beauty of this car is that while it's as wild as a wolf, it can also be as controllable as a sheepdog. And if you put the car into sports handling mode, it gives you a little bit of tail slip if you want it, but <laughs> will safely gather you up before you go past the point of no return. And that's brilliant if you want to feel like a driving god, but you don't want to actually be exposed eventually as a false prophet as you end up backwards in a ditch. The only real letdown to the whole experience is perhaps the steering. Yes, it works, but unlike in some other performance cars, it doesn't let you feel the road. And so it's a bit like trying to read Braille while wearing oven gloves. 
still, you don't always want to feel things, do you? And as you cycle this car through its various driving modes, going from race to Sport Plus to Sport and then to Comfort, you can feel it gently lower its guard and just become a little bit more chilled out as the throttle response softens and the adaptive suspension just relaxes and it becomes more comfortable and even the exhaust note, it becomes quieter as you go through those stages and yeah, then it's a reasonably comfy car to just pool around in. Then you're left with a normal Mercedes C-Class Coupe. That means a comfy cruiser with a high-class cabin which feels top-notch. The only letdown is the infotainment system, which isn't as good as that in a BMW M4. The BMW is better for carrying rear passengers too, but then that's not the point of a coupe now, is it? If your mates moan, they can bloody well get out and walk, because after all, this thing is anything but a cheap ride. For starters, this is an expensive car to run, so Mercedes claims it should be capable of 33 miles per gallon. But since he's owned it, James has only averaged 21 miles per gallon, and he drives it a lot more sedately than I have been today. And then there's the price. The C63 Coupe starts from £62,000, but if you click on the pop-out banner, you can save around five grand on one at carwow.co.uk. That's exactly what James did. I just hope he doesn't watch this review and see how badly I treated his car. Otherwise, this is going to be my last video for Garwow. Actually, I probably shouldn't sit on the car either. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. Click on our logo to subscribe and on the video windows to watch our AMG Mega Drag Race and full in-depth review of the Mercedes C-Class Coupe.